Back in the Word of God today, we're going to be in Zechariah chapter 14. But before we get started, let's ask for words of wisdom from our Heavenly Father in Yeshua Jesus Christ and Messiah's precious, precious name. Zechariah in the Hebrew tongue means remembered of Yah, remembered of our living God. Our Heavenly Father will never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. When we fall short, we go to our Heavenly Father with a repentant heart, asking for forgiveness and changing our ways. But know that our Lord God Almighty has not forgotten us, and Jesus Christ is returning for his own. So let's get into this, and let's see what our Heavenly Father has to say. Uh, Zechariah chapter 14 has to do with the events directly preceding the return of Jesus Christ, as well as going into the day of the Lord. What is the day of the Lord? Second Peter chapter 3, verse 8, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. So we know that our Heavenly Father is on the throne, and He is in control. Things are coming down as we see prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. So let's get into this, and let's see what our Heavenly Father needs us to know. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 1, and it reads, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Behold, look here. The day of the Lord, the thousand years, the millennium, is coming. But what's going to happen before Jesus Christ returns here? Verse 2, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Now, what are we talking about? Remember, before Jesus Christ returns here, the Antichrist is going to come in, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God. He's going to do it exactly as it is written, and it is written. Documentation for that is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Now, when he comes here, you've got the whole world, Christian nations anyway, waiting on a marriage. And when you see the Antichrist coming in, sitting in the holy place, claiming to be God, and people are not prepared for that, he's going to be beautiful. He's going to be supernatural. He's going to have his supernatural entities with him. He's going to come in prosperously and peacefully, as we are told he will do in Daniel chapter 8, verses 23 through 25. But what do we need to know when we're talking about the houses rifled? What is he talking about? Whole houses of souls who are going to go and worship and serve the Antichrist because they are not ready for what is coming. Many people have been told you don't have to read and study and know what the Word of God has to say because we're out of here. And that is just not true. We have to know how things are going to come down. So you're going to have whole houses rifled. The souls will follow the Antichrist. And when it talks about the women ravished, what are we talking about there? These women, remember, we're waiting on the return of Jesus Christ. When it's talking about we are to remain spiritually virgins waiting on Jesus Christ because there's a marriage supper coming. Let's go over to... Um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 19, remember this. And woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. What has happened to these people who are with child? We're not talking about a physical baby. We're talking about people who have become spiritually impregnated by the Antichrist. They believe him to be their Lord and Savior. They're worshiping him. They're serving him. They're doing his work. That is what we're referring to when Jesus Christ said these words. It was not talking about a physical baby. It's talking about a spiritual impregnation. But these women are going to, we, these people who are supposed to be the bride of Christ, will be taken by, no longer spiritually a virgin. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 11, and I'm going to read the words of Paul. Verses 2 and 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 and 3, For I am jealous over you with godly jealous, with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Verse 3, But I fear least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. The Word of God is given to us. We are to read, study, and know what our Heavenly Father has to say. The simplicity in Christ is to believe upon 
our Lord and our Savior, believe upon Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1, verse 1. Verse 14 in that same John chapter 1. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That was Jesus Christ. We are waiting on His return. So those women that we see in Zechariah chapter 14, 14 verse 2, that are ravished, they are ravished, they are taken by the Antichrist, no longer spiritual virgins. When it says half of the city shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city, because who is the residue? That is going to be God's elect. Those will be the ones who will be brought before councils, will be brought before the synagogue of Satan for a witness of Jesus Christ and a witness against the Antichrist and his little cronies. But think about it. When it tells us in the word of God that the gospel will be spread all around the world, those those trials will be televised. It'll probably be, in my. this is my opinion, televised on every smartphone, computer, television out there. The whole world will know what's going on in those days. They will know, they will see us being brought up for a testimony against the Antichrist and a testimony for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Again, we do not premeditate what we will say in that day for the Lord, Spirit of the Holy One will speak through us during that day. So Acts chapter um Acts chapter 2 was Pentecost. That is going to be the same thing. One voice coming forward and going out into all languages. One voice coming from a, a one who is brought up and spreading all across the world in the exact dialect in which those people speak. So they will have understanding. Verse 3, back into Zechariah chapter 14, and it reads, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Now this battle is, is uh, in the Hebrew tongue, 71, 28, your Strong's Concordance, that's Karab, that is a hostile encounter, just like when Satan fell before, he, remember, Satan no longer wanted to be a protective cherubim. He wanted to, he wants to be God. He still thinks he can do it. He's got most of the world worshiping and serving him now. But the, this battle that is coming, that is between our Heavenly Father and Satan to bring an end of all wars. It is the battle that will end all worlds, but it's going to be utter destruction. Let's read this next verse. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4, and it reads, And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. I want you to... We're going to look at the word cleave in just a minute, but in Acts chapter 1, starting at verse... 8 to verse 12 when Jesus Christ ascended back to our Lord God Almighty and the two angels were standing there and they told the disciples that Jesus Christ is going to return where he ascended so Jesus Christ is going to return on the Mount of Olives Mount Olivet but when you see this word cleave that is in your Hebrews concordance that is H1234 that is to, I'm going to put it up here for you rend break rip Make a break. Now, when is that going to happen? That is going to happen at the seventh trump, the furthest one out. When Jesus Christ returns here, there's going to be a shaking like we've never seen before. There is going to be a breaking like we've never seen before. When that Mount of Olives, the cleaving of it, is going to be unlike anything we've ever seen. We're going to read in just a minute. It's going to be very close to what they saw earlier. We talked about it, Amos chapter 1, verse 1, but this is going to be something we've never, ever seen before. A shaking and a breaking, and there's going to be knees, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is King of kings and Lord of lords. Let's go over to verse 5 and read this. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountain shall reach into Azel. That is, Azel is not a place yet, it is a future. Yea, ye shall flee like as... Ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah, and 
the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. And Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, returns here. He's going to have a, a army with him of all the prophets, the saints that passed on before now, before our time. He's bringing them. There's going to be a cleaning like we've never seen before. A shaking and a cleaning is coming. And again, that um, earthquake in the days of Uzziah, you can find that in, uh, we talked about it, Amos chapter 1, verse 1. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 6, and it reads, And it shall come to pass in that day, this is the day of the Lord, that the light shall not be clear nor dark, let's read verse 7, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. Now, there's not going to be any darkness. There's not going to be uh, anything like we're accustomed to right now. We're going to be changed over to our spiritual bodies. Know that. But John chapter 8, verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but ye shall have the light of life. Now, Satan, darkness, is going to be, for the millennium, he is going to be bound a thousand years. Chained, and you'll find documentation for that in... Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 4. So there is not going to be spiritual darkness. We will not have the hang-ups of the flesh. We will be changed over to our spiritual bodies. And we're going to get to that in just a few minutes at verse 12. But know that the light of the world, the light that will precede all things, is going to be here. And we will not have to deal with worldliness or worldly things ever again. Back into Zechariah chapter 14, verse 8, and it reads, And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea, in summer and in winter shall it be. That living water, the living, the fountain that is going to proceed out of the throne of God, that brings that healing and that peace and that comfort, to bring perfection that we do not know in these flesh bodies. Verse 9. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. There is only one God. That is our holy heavenly father. He is the only God. Satan is going to be locked away. His fallen angels are going to be blotted out for eternity. And but Satan will be released a short time at the end of the millennium. At the end of the millennium, why? To test the children, to test the souls. We don't want to ever have to do this again. Know that. Verse ten. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Geba to Ramon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place. From Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Haniel unto the king's wine press. Now, think about, now when Jesus Christ told the disciples, he said, they brought him out and they were standing there and they were looking at all the great buildings. Look at all these great buildings. What did Jesus Christ say to them? Let's go over there and read it real quick. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to start reading at verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That is talking about when he returns here, there's going to be a shaking and a cleaning. And many people think that he's talking about 70 AD when that Roman... Uh, General Titus came and destroyed the second temple. No, we've never seen anything like the shaking and the cleaning that is coming near future to us. Verse 3, And he said upon the Mount of Olives, and the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? So there's your context. They're asking, When is this going to happen? Lord, when are you going to return? And he just, because he previously said not one stone will be standing upon another. And we know that is not happened yet. Not happened yet. 
Zechariah chapter 14, verse 11, and it reads, And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. That it, we are looking forward to that. It's going to be a great day. Thank you, Father. Verse 12, And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. Now, this sounds kind of gruesome, and we're not talking about a nuclear war. I've heard many people try to say that this is a nuclear war, but it's not. Let's go over to... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Many people want to use this verse, part of this verse, for the any moment doctrine. But they leave out the whole point of this verse. Listen, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. And it reads, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. That's number seven, folks. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. We will be changed over to our spiritual bodies at that very moment. Not before that. Not at all before that. We're not talking about a nuclear war. We're talking about Zechariah chapter 14, verse 12. Don't be deceived. Back into Zechariah chapter 14, verse 13, and it reads, And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Why is that going to be? Because many people, when they realize that they've been deceived and they've been told that they're supposed to fly up out of here and they didn't, and then they worship the Antichrist because they were not prepared for how things were going to come down, they're going to go to their neighbor and they're going to lay their hands on them, just like that mother and that father that, um, thrust through the son that lied to them and all those people, false doctrines, false narratives, false prophets. How do you know the difference? Does what they say align with the word of God or not? But ultimately, remember, we are responsible for our own soul. We are responsible to get into the word of God, to read, study, and know what our Father has to say. It's our soul. People can be out there lying left and right, but if you know what the Word of God, and I'm not talking about knowing it perfectly because nobody will ever do that in the flesh body. I'm talking about having a good working plan and the knowledge of God. Verse 14, And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of the, all the heathen round about shall be gathered together gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. Let's read the next verse. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in the tents as this plague. What is this talking about? Now, you know what gold and silver and these beautiful fine apparel is. That's, that's material possessions. But also know at the time that Zechariah was written, that this was also um, part of commerce. And the thing is, when it says that they will lose their horse, they'll lose their mule, they'll lose their camel, they'll lose their ass. Why? Because all that's going to nothingness. What was so important to people in the flesh body, they kill for, they die for, wealth, money, prosperity it's going to nothingness all of it is going to nothing verse 16 and it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all nations which came against jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king the lord of hosts and to keep the feast of tabernacles very very important keeping god's feast days verse 17 and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. There will be no living water for them. Why will they not go and worship and serve our living God? 
There's no hang-ups of the flesh. There's no cognitive inabilities. We have perfect recall. But the, it is written, and so it shall be. Even in the millennium, when Satan is held, bound, and, and his evil spirit cannot even transverse the earth at that time, and they still... Some people are just bad people. Some souls are just bad souls. Verse 18, And if the family of Egypt go not up, and come not, and that that have no rain, there shall be a plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. I'm going to read the next verse. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. What is that ultimate uh, smiting of souls after the great white throne judgment? These, in, these souls will be done away with. Verse 20. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots of the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar, precious and good. Verse 21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judea shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see it therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanites in the house of the Lord of hosts. Why is this? Because Satan is done away with. All his fallen angels are done away with. All those evil souls that will not worship and love our holy heavenly father, they're done away with. It's going to be perfect harmony. It's going to be perfect peace. And when it's this Canaanites, it's a poor translation. It's the Kenites. They're going to be gone. They still have an opportunity. They were born of woman. Unlike the fallen angels who did not, who came to earth, not to be born of woman, but to seduce women. But cannot still have an opportunity. They can change. They can love the Lord. And what is our sacrifice? Father tells us exactly what he wants from us. Hosea chapter 6, verse 6. For I desire mercy. That's love. And not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Father wants you to love him and to know him through his word. Yeah, and that's going to be it for today. We will be uh, in Malachi next time. But in the meantime, read, study, and know what our Heavenly Father has to say. Times are getting more and more profound. We're seeing prophecy being fulfilled on a daily basis. Basis. We know that our Lord God Almighty is coming and we know that the end of this dispensation of time is coming. We're looking forward to a better day. Keep that in mind. We see things coming down, folks, but that's going to be it. If you like today's teaching, like, share, and subscribe, and let's get the word out. I hope you have a great day and join us again.